preparing for Easter, we're talking about how that that this son that, that was given unto us, that son that was going to bear all of our burden, all our grief, all our pain, all of our suffering. Glory to God. Now, now the second is likened unto the first, and the first is likened unto the second, that the equal is. If I express my love to God, I have to express my love to my fellow man. Now, I'm not talking about some kind of mushy, sick love like our politicians are going through now. I'm talking about respect. We, we have to have great respect for God. Most people, they have very little respect for God. Amen. I said most people, they have very little respect for God. Amen. And we have to have you know, you, you, you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. It's absolutely impossible, I'll tell you, you know, uh, in an academic situation. You, you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. In other words, if you love God and, and you love your neighbor, the Bible said you're to love your neighbor as you love yourself and you can't Love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. You can't have respect for your neighbor if you don't have respect for yourself. So last night when I'm laying in my sick bed and I've been running the fever and I'm sick and, and, and I am uh, really questioning where God is at and, and uh, why that I have to suffer being as good and perfect as I am and here I am laying up here with all that, that food poisoning and, and, and that neighbor comes down my back at him with that loud boom box uh, uh, blowing up then uh, I have to ask myself love your neighbor and you love yourself I would not do that first of all I have more respect for my hearing than all that loud noise. But I think that, that people have a right to live in their home with a certain amount of peace and quietness and that I don't have any right to jump over someone's fence with my noise or with, you know. And I'm going to respect that. Now, I, I can't respect my neighbor, so I just laid down and said the poor kid, 20 some odd years old, had no respect for himself. See, we're living in a world today that's going to try to go through after Christmas, uh, Ash Wednesday, 40 days of Lent, uh, and then observe Easter. How do we prepare for Easter? Listen to what the Bible said in Genesis 22, 8, 13. Abraham and Sarah <coughs> desired a son. And uh, whenever God allowed them to have a child, there's something that was demanding in the formation of the psyche and the human brain that there was something missing. And the only way that there could be any filling of that gap is there had to be some type of a sacrifice. Sally and I was born, born several years ago, where supposedly in the 18th century, the last human sacrifices were offered up. What a common thing back in time where they, they felt like that they had to offer up human sacrifices, animal sacrifices. Abraham was called of God, a man that feared God, a man that loved God, a man that put God first. You remember whenever the Bible said that he called Abram up out of Ur of Chaldees to go into a land that I'm going to give you. Abraham got up not knowing where he was going to go, but he got up by faith and he began to sojourn looking for a city Made with that hand, the city of God. That's what we're looking for today. That's what these misguided individuals by the thousands are looking for today. They, they think that somehow they're going to Democrat or Republican or Communist or Socialist are going to provide them. But they're not going to. You know, the problem with our politician, they spend more than what we can make. 
Amen. I'm not preaching politics. I'm telling you how that we're going to go from Easter, or rather from Christmas, and we're going to make our preparation for Easter and understand the reality of what we're living in today and how that we can be victorious in what we are experiencing today. So God told Abraham, said, Abraham said, I want you to offer up your only son. Think about it. God had promised him a son. He had now a son of promise. In his old age, he had a son of promise. Now God said, I want you to take him up on top of the mountain and I want you to offer him up. Abraham got up, got the mule train all ready, he got it uh, saddled up, and got Isaac to put the wood on the mule. They started upside the mountain to find an altar to offer up Isaac. Now, see, God, what God has promised, God is going to perform. We forget that a lot of times. And we start then injecting in our tradition, our dreams, our theories, and some of these are wild-eyed prophets on television with all of their dreams, visions, and revelations that had nothing to do with the Bible. Amen. And the man, how all of them going to raise in money? And at the same time, talking about they're fixing to be raptured out and taken out to, well, you're going to need all that money if you're going to be gone. Hmm? And so whenever Isaac began to get inquisitive and ask himself a question, hey, Dad said, hey, we got the mule train, we got the mule, we got the wood, we got everything, and there's the knife, but where's the offering? I would be a little bit excited too if I was Isaac and then my daddy was taking me up on top of a mountain and he was going to offer me up as a human sacrifice. Now, Abraham had to know one or two things. That if he offered up Isaac, God would raise him from the dead. Or God would provide a substitute. Now, see, whenever Adam and Eve sinned, that they did something to us that's incurable. It's called death. Sin entered in and death by Sin. There had to be a cure in here whenever Abraham was going to offer up Isaac to, and he had to know one or two things because the man had absolute faith and trust in God. He believed and worshipped God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. So that meant that he also loved Isaac. They love God. So they had to know that either God would raise Isaac up from the dead or he was going to provide a substitute. And Abraham lifted up his eyes. That's what he said. He came uh, under the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took an iron. Amen. That's what that had told in the eighth verse. Or seven, but I spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, 